that's what I've been waiting for. That's what it's all about. Woo! Hey, how's it going, guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is George Man, and I'm your friendly neighborhood anime and manga fan. I love all things anime and all things manga, and I'm here today to talk about Chainsaw Man chapter 143. So, what did I think about this week's chapter? Uh, if you guys already saw the video, the intro, I absolutely was completely mind blown by this week's chapter, and I thought it was phenomenal. I think this week's chapter really emphasized one of Fujimoto's biggest strengths, which is always subverting people's expectations. Because if you would have told me what happened in this chapter last week, I would have been like, you're lying. There's no way that that happens. Because I'm pretty sure that everybody had an idea of what was going to happen in this week's chapter. And I'm almost certain that if I were to have to ask 100 people last week what was going to happen in this week's chapter, all of them would have been wrong. Because I don't think nobody saw this coming. And I thought that that was a phenomenal way for Fujimoto to completely blow us away with this week's chapter. Now, before I go any further with this week's chapter, I just wanted to give you guys a quick reminder to make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you guys can be up to date with all my Chainsaw Man as well as all my anime and manga content that I'll be providing in this channel. It really helps out a lot and I would really, really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my YouTube channel. So if you guys could, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, with all that out of the way, let's get into this week's chapter. And how this week's chapter pretty much starts off is we see the hybrids. We catch up with what they're doing and we see that they're about to, you know, pre pretty much commit the massacre. And we see that, that we got the whip hybrid the spear hybrid and then sugo the sword hybrid in there and how this chapter starts is we see that pretty much the spear hybrid is just going on about like okay so here's the plan we want to obviously make the loudest scream so we got to go target the women and the kids because they have the you know the higher pitch voices and also go for the limbs because that would make people scream more and it'll be even better for us you know more attention and throughout it all i was like dude this guy i thought barim was sadistic this guy is even worse, I think. If, if not, he might be up there because now I can see that why they're part of this cult, pretty much. Because these guys are delusional. These guys are crazy. And, I, like, it was funny because I saw some discourse online that people were speculating, like, maybe they don't go through with it. Maybe, you know, they realize, like, no, this is such an evil act. Like, we should not be doing this. And I saw some people, you know, theorizing that was going to happen. Obviously, they were wrong because <laughs> this guy is completely 100% with a with plan. He's 100% down for it. And so is the whip hybrid and talking about the whip hybrid we see that you know throughout it all the the spear hybrid kept calling them kids and you see that the whip hybrid is like hey don't call me a kid i'm i'm you know watch watch your mouth i'm i'm 82 years old and then suko was like what and that was a big surprise we we knew that hybrids you know didn't age like when it came to appearances and why not and but i, I didn't expect her to be 82 like <laughs> I mean, we I, I thought all this time that she was like prob relatively young, probably Katana Man's age or something like that. But no, she's old. <laughs> like, and that was pretty fun because you see Sugo just like, what, what is this old hag doing? And then she's like, watch your mouth. You know, don't call me an old hag. And then she pretty much goes on this whole like crazy rant about like, you know, we're weapons and, you know, God will forgive us. And because we're special, we're gifted with these powers, you know, we're bestowed upon by God these powers and why not? and you know it's our duty to do all this and it shall be glorious and it was a bunch of like rhetoric that she was spewing out and even Suga was like oh my god like these people are like am i in the right party pretty much is did i choose the right side and you see Suga throughout it all like contemplating like did i make the right choice and it all encapsulates when you know this little kid just like falls down and you know Sugo's looking at him like oh man i'm really gonna like about to kill this kid like really because they, you know, so they say at 5 p.m., you know, on the dot, we're going to just commit this huge massacre. And you just see Sugo, like, keep looking at this kid and just, like, contemplating, like, oh, my God, is is this really the right thing to do? But, like, yeah, we're, you know, it's God's wish. And as a whole, I just like how this chapter, you know, gave some character to these hybrids as a whole. Because we already knew Sugo, but we also now get to see more of the whip hybrid and, you know, the, the spear hybrids, you know, their whole mental state, which seems to not be in the best place, to say the least. And you see, we continue, we see that the clock's about to be turning to five and they're like, okay, it's showtime, like, let us do this. And then you see that they're about to like, you know, pretty much, you know, wreck havoc, you know, about to transform. And right before they're about to transform, you just see this person with a tuxedo just slice them all up and like instantaneously and just completely defeats them with ease. Like this, this character just comes out of nowhere, just speed blitzes them. And you see, it was funny because you even see the whip hybrid is like, it's showtime and like in her head, it's in midair and you're like, what? And you know, she, uh, this character continues to just slice everybody up and the sword hybrid, he, you know, Sugo, he's like, okay, well, what was that? And it's like, okay, I, I'm gonna like, I gotta stop you. Like, I'm not gonna let you like take us all down. And you know, he proceeds to just completely get destroyed by Quan Chi. And that was the, that was a big surprise. I was not expecting 
quantity to show up, especially not interfering with this, because I, I know that myself, as well as many others, were speculating that maybe Yoshida, you know, Fumiko might step in, and, you know, Asa might stop the hybrids and why not, but no, <laughs> if you would have put it in the bingo card, like, Quan Chi's gonna return and stop them, I would have been almost certain that nobody would have, you know, cho chosen that decision, like, nobody would have guessed that, and this was a great reintroduction for Quan Chi, you know, she just completely shows why she is the GOAT, you know, she was the strongest, you know, living Devil Hunter, and it obviously shows because she just completely defeats them. And a fun fact, she's one of the two only characters that Denji never defeats in part one. It was the Darkest Neville and it was Quan Chi. He never defeats neither of them. And it shows because Quan Chi is very powerful. So powerful, in fact, that she pretty much made three hybrids just look like fodder. Now, bear in, bear in mind that they hadn't transformed yet, but I'm, I'm almost certain that even if they were to transform, she would De defeat them with ease like because even in part one you know she, when she's fighting denji denji's in his chainsaw man form she hadn't even transformed and she was wrecking his, you know wrecking him so I'm, I'm mostly certain that she would have wrecked them either way but continuing on we see that you know she you know she just wipes the floor with them and they're all like you know you see their parts all over the floor and it was funny because the one kid that you know fell down and you know sugo was like talking to or like he looked at he 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 looks at Quan Chi and even Quan Chi's like raw like she just scares him off and I thought that was, that was a funny moment and you just see like Quan Chi's such a badass dude like she is the goat right <laughs> but what happens is you know she gives a call and she calls you know the the public safety and she's like okay the job's done uh you know make sure that the media like doesn't come and you know make sure there's no like coverage of it for like 20 minutes or so uh everything's you know under control make sure the special division seven you know takes over after this and fun fact, you know, Fumiko is part of Special Division 7. So, you know, it's cool that I, I like to think that they already had all this plan. Like, they already knew, like, pretty much how to take, like, you know, a, a contingency plan to all this. Because we knew that they don't want Denji to transform. And you know what? Now, knowing that Quan Chi is part of the public safety community, like, I wouldn't even be mad. Like, I, I understand, like, you know, they don't really need Chainsaw Man, right? <laughs> I mean, they got Quan Chi and she's pretty strong. So, like, you really don't need Chainsaw Man. And what we see is that... You know, she gives the call out and, you know, eventually all, all over the news, like, yeah, you know, like the, the Chainsaw Man Church, you know, the, they're doing these terrorist attacks. And, you know, throughout it all, you just see that the leader of the Chainsaw Man Church, you know, the high school student that, you know, was hanging out well, with Asa and Denji in the aquarium, you know, the guy with the fake Chainsaw Man, like, uh, transplant or whatever you see that he's completely freaking out about the whole situation because it's like whoa whoa what's happening and you just see he's talking to this old guy he's like okay well the plan failed and it, you know the the leader he's like dude what are we going on about it's like well we gotta make sure that you know we gotta fight back and he's like what talk to me what is going on it's like we're gonna make sure that every person that's trained get all the weapons and make sure that you know we gotta do our last stance and you're like what is happening and, and we see that the chapter ends pretty much where, where, you know, the leader, he's like, we got to take them down. And you just see that the, this guy, I don't even know what's happening right now. Like, now it seems like the Chainsaw Man Church is going to be destroyed. Like, pretty much because, listen, if Quan Chi's in the opposite team, you guys already lost. Like, already wrap it up, call it a GG. Like, you guys are not standing a chance against Quan Chi. Quan Chi will speed bleeds everybody in that church. So if I was the leader of the church, I would just call it a day and just be like, okay, you guys got me. All right, GG. But we most certainly know that they, that won't happen. Now, the, a big question is, now in part two, we have seen, I believe, five of the hybrids out of the original ones. We already seen Barim, we seen, you know, uh, Sugo, we saw the whip, the spear, and now we got introduced as well to Quan Chi. So now that only leaves two left. And, you know, Reese is looking more and more likely she's coming back. And when that day does come, it'll be glorious. Also, Katana Man. Uh, I, I have a little theory that maybe he might be in the public safety, you know, working in the same like kind of division with uh, Quan Chi. Because think about it, um, Quan Chi's working there, and I'm sure that Katana Man, once he got you know captured and why not, I'm sure that you know they you know told him like, hey, either you can work for us or you can be tossed aside and you know tortured and kept as a slave for the rest of your existence, your choice. <laughs> and I'm sure that he was he would have taken the ladder and be like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna you know make sure I'm I'm I'll be I'll be your dog, whatever, I don't care. And I just think it'll be cool, if, like I said, if Denji and Katana Man eventually team up and fight, you know, the Nostradamus, you know, catastrophe. I think that'd be pretty cool. But overall, I thought this chapter was fantastic. And I think that Fujimoto absolutely killed it and demonstrated, like, we can never, you know, get a read on this series. We can never predict anything that's happening. But I, I, at least that's how I feel, because no matter how many times I think I, I, predict, I can predict something, you know, Fujimoto always throws a curveball and just 
completely subverts my expectations and i think that's phenomenal i think that's a great you know it goes to show you know how, why he's such a good writer because he always keeps a grasp of his audience and you know shakes them around like yeah you you're gonna be in a wild ride bro you can <laughs> and it shows because he's exceptional he's to, to me the best current you know shonen author and not just even shonen i think he's a top three best authors if not the best author currently in the business but with all that being said what did you guys think about this week's chapter did you guys love it did you guys hate it did you guys thought it was all right what did you guys thought let me know in the comment section down below also thank you so much for sticking all the way to the end of the video i really appreciate it and don't forget to like comment and subscribe to my youtube channel for more chainsaw man as well as more anime and manga content in the near future but yeah with that being said i hope you have a great rest of your day Bye bye